And welcome and good morning. It is Mike Ferry TV. You know, it's amazing. January is gone. February is already starting. We know that in many, many cases, January was a very challenging month for a lot of our clients, and I'm sure a lot of you, because with the weather that we had across most of North America, the interesting political unrest that we've all had to view and experience, and the fact that it was a new year. So a lot of people got off to a little bit slower start than necessary. However, now is the time to start. In January, we had our three-day annual production retreat. We had 2,284 people in the room, which was exciting because the room was uh, not capable of handling that many people. It was pretty packed. What we did on day one, and I want to share with you what we did on day one over the next several weeks. So I want you to make a big note. Watch Mike Ferry TV for the next three or four weeks. I went through a series of thoughts. I, I, what I did is I, I, I'm, I'm kind of a crazy fanatic on talking to people that are really good and really successful. So what I did is, over the course of a period of time, I interviewed and chatted with, I think probably about 75 or 80, it might have been 90, top producing agents that are doing 100 plus transactions a year. And of course, I'm always trying to figure out what do they do, what do they say, how do they think, how do they operate, because my belief is, if somebody else is doing an extraordinary amount of business, that means that you and I can do the same. Hardest part about real estate is developing the belief that you can accomplish great things within your business. Most people don't have the belief. You develop the belief, which leads you to the skills, which leads you to the confidence, which leads you to the actions, you can be a mega producer. Now, that belief is based on a lot of things, but we also know that you have to hear, you have to be able to see, understand what people that are doing this kind of production do for you to do the same. So I, I want to share with you what I opened up the production retreat with. I'm going to read it to you if I may. I wrote, I wrote down and I read to our audience in January, how do we guarantee that each of us, you and I, achieve all the goals we've set for 2017? Today we have, within the Mike Ferry organization, nearly 1,000 agents who are closing over 100 transactions per year. Now think about that. And many are doing 150, 200, 300 transactions a year. You and I constantly hear about all these agents that are doing two, three, 400 transactions a year. And when we talk to them, they'll have a team, very common, of 10, 20, 30, 40 agents working for them. And if you analyze this type of business very carefully, it's really not a team. It's a real estate office operating within a real estate office. I spend a major portion of my time trying to figure out what do all these people do to become productive? So it should be noted that over 95% of the thousand top producing agents we deal with, rarely if ever do we find any of them that have a big team. Now, yes, they'll have an assistant or two almost every time. They probably will have a showing agent to give the buyers to as they keep listing property. But the truth is what these people are, they're incredibly good listing agents. And for 2017, if I can't convince you of anything else, and I have to tell you, I only convince a very small portion of the people I talk to to become a superstar listing agent because it is hard work compared to working with buyers. We just had an agent that uh, just left our coaching. And we asked, why did you leave our coaching after a year? Well, I'd rather work with buyers. And why would you rather work with buyers? Because I don't have to prospect and I don't have to do that intense lead follow-up and I can casually take my time and I can build a relationship with them and we can become friends and we can become family. I want, wait a minute. You're gonna do what, five, 10, 12, 15 deals a year max with that behavior pattern? Well, I can do 10 or 12 deals a year. Well, I understand that but his average commission is 5,000 bucks. So he'll make 50,000 bucks. Now, if you're making 50,000 bucks a year and you're satisfied, I'm with you 100%. But if you wanna make $500,000 a year instead of 50,000, you're gonna to have to become a strong listing agent. So how do they do it? So what we're gonna look at over the next several weeks is a series of thoughts that I've virtually pulled out of all these top producers on how they do the extraordinary business they do. So I'm gonna go through them with you one at a time. And again, it's gonna take a couple weeks, so pay attention. Here's number one. A high volume, listing-oriented real estate sales business requires the highest quality service and at the same time, very high standards on the part of the agent. What does that mean? Okay, well, here's the first thing I discovered 
about all these great big producers. They offer the highest quality service possible to their buyers and sellers, and they have very high standards for themselves as to what that service is going to be. See, I wrote down the higher the quality of service, the higher the quality of business you'll do, which brings you the highest profit as an agent. To offer the highest quality service requires exceptional skills, and when you have exceptional skills, you make business decisions faster, which in turn brings you more business. Why do most of us not take a lot of listings? We don't have the skills. And because we don't have the skills, we can't offer the service that a seller wants to see offered. If we can't offer good quality service to a seller, they're gonna overprice the property. They're gonna ask you to cut the commission. They're gonna give you a short listing. See, all the problems the listing agents deal with come as a result of a lack of quality service being extended. You and I will pay a lot of money for good service. You and I will gladly participate with a company, an organization, a salesperson, that is gonna offer us good service. And the higher that service, the more respect we have for them. You and I have to refine the service we offer to a seller. We refine the service by really working on our skills. The skills give us the confidence to go in and make the presentation. But look what I wrote down then. I said, now, you offer great skills, which helps you make decisions faster, which brings you more business. Now, what do I mean by that? Well. I, I talk to agents all the time. Are you gonna become a good listing agent? Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it, good. When are you gonna start? <clears throat> well, Mike, you have to understand, I've got three buyers and I've been working with them for about a month and they're all gonna buy and I, I hope to wrap them up in the next four to six weeks. Okay, good. Can you start working on your listings in the meantime? Yeah, but you know, I, I don't wanna interrupt this flow I have with the buyers or in essence, they're getting ready to get going, to begin, to get moving, to do something maybe tomorrow if they have the time. And we hear this all the time. So the first thing I discovered about all these 100 plus producers, and there's a lot of them out there we work with, high quality service, they offer the best service. Now, let me ask you a question. If you're gonna spend your hard earned money on any product, any service, anywhere, do you expect good service? Of course you do. You and your wife, you and your husband go to a nice restaurant and as you're gonna pay a lot of money, you expect good service every single time. Watch, you decide to purchase a car, you expect good service. You decide to buy a new pair of shoes, you expect good service. Well, that's what your sellers expect. So first, high quality service. Are you giving that? Second, your standards as an agent have to be high to offer high quality service. And the standards, which are those things that you absolutely do, cannot take place unless you have good skills. And as your skills improve, your confidence goes up and you make decisions faster. All right, now watch point number two from these top producers. To, main, to maintain high levels of productivity, we have to learn to initiate changes in our business and stop reacting emotionally to the changes to take place in our business. What do I mean by that? Okay, now think about it. We have to learn to initiate change. Are there any changes you should be making in 2017 in your business to produce at a higher level? For example, moving from say 30% listings and 70% buyers to 50% listings and 50% buyers. That's a change. All right, a change to say, I'm going to now start pre-qualifying every buyer and seller, no exceptions. So therefore I have to learn and use the scripts for pre-qualifying and buyers and sellers. That's a change. Maybe you're wasting a tremendous amount of time, okay? So changing would be developing a schedule and following it. Are there any changes you have to initiate? The answer is yes in almost every case. And then when you make those changes, you have to learn not to react emotionally to the responses you're gonna get. If you stood up into your company sales meeting and said, I'm gonna follow Mike Ferry for the next five years and I'm gonna become a great listing agent, people will actually get mad at you. Isn't that amazing? You know, why are you doing that? What are you gonna follow him for? What does he know? You know, he'll make you a cold call. You know, all the normal baloney that people say all the time. Well, you have to learn to accept the emotional response of people. You become a strong listing agent, sellers aren't always gonna agree with you. 
I'm not going to give you 6%. Somebody else will do it for 4%. Now, you want to reach over and smack them in the head, but you can't respond emotionally to these kind of people. What changes are taking place around you in the business you don't understand? And what changes do you have to make? What skills are required for you to go to this level of productivity that I know you want to go to? I, I talked to a broker in Los Angeles in the fall of last year. And I was talking about maybe instituting some of the things we do within his company. And the guy actually, listen to this, quote, I openly and proudly operate my business the same way I did in 1985. Let's see, 95, 2005, 2015. So he's proud about the fact that he's been stuck for 32 years at the same level of operation, okay? Number three is a tough one, and it's one that we spent a lot of time on on the production retreat. To achieve the goals you've set for 2017, we can never allow ourselves to be mentally in a position where we desperately need a listing or a sale. Because the moment that client recognizes you need the deal, the transaction changes to a point of desperation. You move from being a professional salesperson to an agent that will do anything to get a listing or make a sale. Desperation is the downfall of all success. We can't be attached to the outcome. Now, I bet there are some people in real estate today, and maybe at times for yourself, where you really need that sale, you need that listing, you need that commission. That's understandable. That's called human nature. You know, the rent's coming up and the mortgage payment's due and the car payment and you gotta pay your kids tuition and you need to make a deal. Well, I understand the need to do a deal. We, we've all been there. However, when that shows to a seller, when it shows to a buyer, guess what? They take control. The fastest way to lose control of a transaction. Now, do you want the doctor to lose control during a procedure on you? Do you want the pilot to lose control of flying the plane? Of course not. The seller, the buyer wants you to be in control. They're paying you to be in control. Well, if you're desperate and they recognize that they take control, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to get the listing. As soon as that kind of a thought process, okay, permeates your mind, you lose. They're going to change your commission. They're going to overprice the property. They're going to demand an open house. You better start advertising. So if you understand that even if you do need a transaction so bad you can't stand it, you can't allow that type of process to ever enter into this conversation. And number four, great salespeople are always looking within the community as to how other successful business people operate their day-to-day -day business, whether it be studying a real estate agent or studying a good business person. Why? Real estate is a business. Real estate is a sales business. You're a salesperson. You're a business person. There are business people in your town, neighbors, friends, relatives. Look at those that are look at those that are successful and see what they do, see what they say, see how they operate. See if there's anything they're doing that you could be doing. Because see, I believe that anybody that is good in any business, any sales profession, they're all doing basically the same things. Now we may not want to hear what they're doing, but they're all doing the same thing. Do you think they're prospecting? Of course. Managing their time? Are they following up on the prospects and customers? Do they always pre-qualify to make sure the person they're talking to has the need or the desire to use their service? Are they very forceful and strong in their presentation skills? Do they understand the buyers and sellers are going to say certain things back, which is called an objection? Do they have the courage to get a contract signed? Can they negotiate between the two parties? Can they do the administrative follow-up? See, it doesn't matter what the business is, if you're selling life insurance or cars, if you're selling clothes. The guy that I bought my clothes from is great at all these different steps. Are you as good as you should be? Study the people that do it best, or here's a thought, go to more Mike Ferry events, because we have them all the time, all over North America, there's always going to be a big group of successful Mike Ferry clients there. Talk to them, take them to lunch, have breakfast with them, question them, learn what other great people do, and you can do the same. So we're going to do this for the next several weeks. We're going to go through a long series of thoughts of those people that I study that are doing 100 plus transactions a year. You may never want to be there yourself, and I'm okay with that, but you might as well solidify your position you might as well strengthen 
your exact steps to take to get to your goal, and you might as well work to get that goal that you've set, and we're behind you 100%. Talk to you next week.